Hi everybody, welcome back to another technical demo around the Quark Cell application with the Red Hat Data Grid. My name is Daniel O. I'm working for Red Hat as a technical marketing major. This video showcases how to build embedded cache cluster with Quarkus and the Red Hat Data Grid. Let's get started. In the microservice world, there are many ways in which you can configure the cache in your system or application. As a rule of thumb, you, you should use caching only in one place, which means you should never combine the parent or cache in multiple layers at the same time, such as in both HTTP protocol and the application level. More important thing is the discrete caching solution increase cloud-native application performance, but also minimize the overhead of standing up new microservice application. Impin span in a memory data grid that allows running a distributed cache and key value NoSQL data store. It can be used as a cache, for example, session clustering, but also data grid in front of a database. The Red Hat uh, data grid is built on Impin span for the enterprise production environment with a full support of Red Hat experts. So developer can access distributed caching through an embedded Java library but also language independent remote service of the multiple protocols such as Heart Road, REST API, and Memcache. So in this demo, I'm going to walk you through how effectively a Quarkus integrates a cluster embedded data grid cache, which are deployed to Red Hat OpenShift container platform, just like this diagram. Let's jump into the demo. Okay, here's my demo application. Let's take a look at that Palm XML first. So as you can see, uh, we have the Quarkus application, and here are just some extension for Quarkus REST EG for our REST endpoint, and Quarkus REST JSON B. We, we're going to use this extension for JSON serialization for our REST endpoint, and we've got also Quarkus Infinement embedded extension, uh, which allows us to embed our cache in our service as well. So let's try to open our Discord entity here. So this is a, we also create a project called the score, which will serve our the data structure of the scorecard. So if you have a played Go buffer, so you might wonder this is a very basic data structure, and that's uh, entirely true. But we could have gone in more detail, but we can't. This is short to cover all the feature. When you open the score Java file, we have a few fields here. So, for example, the play ID and the card and the course and the course card. And also, we have a product factory, a serialized our uh, attribute. And there are get us error as well, just like a Pojo Java classes here. The Red Hat Data Grid provides an embedded cache manager interface that allows you to create, modify, and manage cluster cache. This cache manager runs in the same JVM as a client application. So let's try to create a new service name in the score service in our Quarkus application project and then add some few uh, definition of an embedded cache manager uh, right here. So we just added the embedded cache object and a cache object with the name score cache and uh, we need to add the logger instance to print the print out necessary uh, log file when you create a new entry etc the score cache is an instance of cache which will be our point to store and retrieve values so cache uh, fundamentally expect key value types in our case so our key is object and our actual entry is a score However, the same score proposal we say earlier, the cache is also central interface of Red Hat Data Grid. So cache provides a highly concurrent optionally distributed data structure with additional features such as JTA, uh, transaction compatibility, eviction, support for evicting entry from memory to prevent out of memory errors, persisting entry to cache loader, either when they are uh, evicted as an overflow all the time. And the log, uh, we're going to stay for the logo in case we want to logo something during the application runtime. And the cache manager, which uh, interface embedded the cache manager, we inject this into our code using the dependency injection. And this is possible because the extension we added in our Maven dependency uh, you just saw earlier. Let's try to add a more access method for our application service here. We can get all value from the cache and return them a list of scope using get all method. 
and uh, we're gonna save in the entry level and then we can expect the score object using save method and we can delete and get entry method as well and these are simple access method one thing you might have noticed is the use of the method get key method this method described as a follow as one simple task for example in order to get us the key which in our application we use the concentrated string of a player ID plus course. So because the entry always have a both of these value, we constrain them on here. Now we're gonna define a global configuration builder to initialize all cache node startup. But the existing cache data also uh, will be the replicated automatically when a new node is created. So we're gonna add the on start method in our uh, scores of the Java class here. So in the cache major is a fairly heavyweight component and you will probably want to initialize in only on your application lifecycle. That's why we add uh, this on star method in our service application. As you can see, uh, uh, we are passing our configuration to cache major and also uh, you're gonna obtain the cache instance from our cache major by using one of the overload get cache method. When you use get cache method, there's no guarantee the instance you get is a brand new or empty because cache are named and shared. As you can see, the cluster, the cache, cluster cache name score card, and then we're gonna have uh, print the uh, expiration of lifespan of this cluster cache is a five minute, and then we're gonna use the cache model replication cycle. You can also use the dip distribution, the another uh, type of the cache of your data grid. Okay, let's try to create our REST resource. This should be a very simple. Just open a score resource Java file. And because we already uh, implement most of the code in the service, so we need to make sure uh, we can uh, just search find the correct RESTful API calls here. So first of all, we're gonna inject our the score service so we can use all the caching function we need. Also, we're gonna add the post method to create and save a new cache entry point. And also we want to be able to get one entry from our cache uh, using uh, get one method here. And last one, and so we're gonna uh, retrieve all cache from list method here. We're gonna need to update entry. Uh, that'll be normally case when you uh, player is playing the round in the golf game. So we score will be update. So we just need to add get one method here with a patch annotation with a new entry point uh, using path annotation. And last step, uh, we're gonna add the class declaration. Okay, move on next. The Red Hat Data Grid uh, fundamentally uh, uses a J group library from join cluster to replicate data of the transport layer. In order to deploy this Quarkus application with the embedded InBisPan cache, we needed to add a DNS pin configuration because we're gonna deploy this application on a push to container platform. So in order to do that, we just add the DNS pin configuration in the jgroup-kubernetes XML file. And Red Hat Data Grid provides the cache listener APIs for client application to get notification when cache event take place. For example, a new cache entry is created. The listener can be implemented with a listener annotation in a POSO class. That's why we need to add the listener annotation on top of the cache listener class. And then let's try to add a more uh, specific uh, method here, entry create and an entry update. We're gonna print out these logs inside a pod when we deploy this application to OpenShift. In order to build and deploy this Quarkus application to OpenShift container platform, luckily Quarkus also offers ability to automatically generate OpenShift the resource based on the default and the user sort of uh, supply configuration. So OpenShift extension is actually the wrapper extension that brings together to Kubernetes and container image S2 extension with the default so that it's easier for user to get started with the Quarkus on OpenShift. So as you can see, uh, we just add a few configuration in application properly and then we just needed to run Maven clean package command line on your local machine. So in the data for configuration, the OpenShift.expose uh, create automatically OpenShift router 
to export your endpoint URL. And then we're going to use a self certificate uh, certification on Open Container Platform. That's why we're going to use Kubernetes dash client uh, dash cert A2. And then we're going to use a container build and then we're going to deploy Kubernetes environment. That's why we put in the true uh, configuration in our application properties. So you just uh, finish and uh, try to make sure your application is running on top of the container platform. So we have uh, uh, just find the DC compute embedded cache workers. Let's go to develop a console in opposite the container platform. As you can see, the Quarkus application already deployed here. So let's try to uh, increase the number of pods uh, to change uh, the replication. So we're going to use OC command line and OC scale DC in the replica equal to. Let's go back to topology view in developer console or uh, opposite container platform and make sure two pod is running. And when you uh, go to the view logs menu and you can find that each Quarkus application is running uh, all the way. And let's try to change the best script to invoke the endpoint with the some test data. And then let's try to find the correct route URL and change that variable. Let's try to run this best script. There are four test data. It's just populated. When you go to top region and click on the view logs and for each part uh, with a different web browser to monitor cache event from cache original, and you're going to see here the same cache entry logs in a both Red Hat Data Grid node. Okay, so Red Hat Data Grid increase application response time and allows developer to dramatically improve the performance while providing availability and reliability and elastic scale. So these benefits can be integrated into serverless architecture, which is designed for high performance, auto scaling, and super fast response time based on Quarkus serverless function as well as external Red Hat Data Grid server as a backend. Thank you for watching this video and please make sure to subscribe my YouTube channel for the next interesting and practical video. Have a good rest of the day.